What's up guys, this is the Rover Minute and I am back bringing you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as Russia. So to kind of round off happened last time, I chewed up a few Swedish stacks to the north. <clears throat> I pulled my um, troops back uh, from attacking Greece um, and pulled them back to Istanbul to maintain to uh, get peace with the Ottomans. And I begin to swing my forces around to the southeast to push into Persia. And I'm fairly sure I'm on the <clears throat> I'm on the brink of that happening. Uh, when Simon Konstantin Voropayev gets to the border, till then I am to make maximum advantage of my economic investments, and also probably make some precautionary investments in Ooh Tsar Guards Elite Infantry. So I declare on Prussia on um, Persia. I'll be at war with Great Britain, Great Britain and the Mughal Empire. Well, I'm hoping that Great Britain chooses my side. And obviously, this is going to diplomatically, I'm doing quite well for a, a total war campaign. Um, yep, I'm at war with Sweden still, actually. So, Kiev. Kiev is fortified, so I am tempted to recruit some regular line infantry and get these elite line infantry up north to St. Petersburg so I can help push these Swedish tacks out of my lands. At least that is the hope. And this army will... Oh, if I do... Shoot them. Get this unit regiment of foot. Get them to tramp up to St. Petersburg. Following my metal roads. Hmm. <laughs> so in terms of diplomacy, I'm... Hmm. Can't really do much to improve that, really. Research and tech is going okay. I have fire by rank. So what sort of light infantry do we get? Light cavalry, sharp shooters, African light mercenaries. Bohemian grins. Oh, I remember this. See, I'm not such a bothered about rockets, but I am bothered about quicklime. I mean, it increases upkeep, but god damn, quicklime's effective. And I've got them still working on uh, their political techs. Cool, just need to be careful of Moscow, because they're not going to be too far off of rebelling. If I leave them be. The Royal Academy might be quite good. So that is the... Uh, secular humanism. So how much would it take you to just ignore that? Eight turns. Okay. Well, I can manage it for eight turns. Now let's hit end turn. Let's see how people react. So I'm thinking this will be quite a big uh, foreign policy hit. Well, I don't know. So I'll be declaring war on the Persians, and I'll be losing the Mughal Empire. Um, but... It could be worse. Like Russia or lots of other annoying countries. Here's the question. Do I start building up a Russian navy to protect my ports in the Baltic? Not to do much else. But to intervene. If interest to blockade my port. Or do I, just need a, or do I still need a really strong fleet to do that? Is it just one worth... Not doing that and instead focusing my efforts on a stronger army. See, everyone's all about stealing Russian tech, because we're the bee, we're the best. We are the bee's knees. Oh. Yeah, as per usual, the endless dance continues. God, the Mughals are not going to be happy. Do I give them Armenia? No, I can't. So my hope was, could I get an army around to Goa, fortify the hell out of it, and then just spread out like sort of like a wound? No. 
that I think they'd be asking for a lot of trouble. It'd be much. It'd be better for me to have a combined front with multiple for multiple stacks moving forward until I at least secure ocean head. There is unused land suitable for farming in this region. There you go. I've just ah oh, good. I've just got flint we'll cannon. Population to grow over time and produce trade income. So. Hmm. It's probably better for me to focus on some easy industry tax, so I can be ready for the when the I lose my economic, uh, lose my trade from those regions. Good, good, good. Get you becoming orthodox. Don't really need to upgrade you. You can recruit lots of good troops already. Speaking of, I'm going to recruit two grenadiers to sit there. New port emerges. It's probably going to be a fishing port. No, tra I'll do a trade port. There are um, fur trappers up here that can supply goods. Okay, my shipyard is being upgraded, but it is poor. So where's my... There it is. I probably could do a lot worse than to start recruiting in Baghdad. Let's get his body. Ooh, let's get this general's bodyguard. They look much cooler. Let's get... Two colonial lights, two artillery, two howitzers, and get union of line. Start recruiting another stack ready to push south. Once I knock out Persia, that's not the end of it. I need to push south into take these last two regions. Sorry, I thought I had a weird noise. Then get ready to push on, take Lahore, push out route, and then just start a slog against the uh, the Indians. And if I can follow troops down, I could start shipping them out of these ports. Ooh. I could do with a shipyard, because a shipyard here to knock out all of these armies in one go would be super helpful. Just start recruiting ships. They're not super strong, but they don't really need to be. And there we go. <laughs> there we go. Solid garrison repression forces in, in action. Cool. Right. It's end turn. Soon the time will be ripe to declare war on. Persia. And Britain's allied with me as well, so Britain may back me. The Mughals definitely won't. Or will they? If they do, that would kind of suck. Because this way I've got a way to declare war on the Mughals and get that war in India um, cooking, while not sparking off a massive war against everyone else in Europe. That's more of what I was concerned about. Oh, Austrians are moving against the, the Ottomans. Not really bothered about them. The Prussians allied with me. The Austrians are friendly for now. If the Persians start pushing east, I'll have a problem. Um, but till then, I've got two weak kingdoms on my border. I should be able to handle that. Particularly if Poland starts pushing back in. That would be excellent. There you go. The Ottomans have got a bit of a bit of oomph about them. Yeah, the Finns are trying a bit of economic warfare again. Forgot to keep an eye on Finland. But I am garrisoning it, so to be honest, it's tempting just to let them let them lay siege. Because I've got a good I think I've I'm pretty sure I've left a good garrison there. So you want me to give you Armenia? Kashmir. No. 
Kashmir's too isolated. It's not good for me. Oh, that's even better. Get your fleet out of the way. Hopefully, sending them towards um, the Americas. In Venice is laying siege to the Turks, so keeping them down so they don't try to, they don't have as much as many free resources to. That's always a good thing. There is unused land suitable for farming. Finland's been besieged. Building farms here will help the population to grow. Oh yeah, I'm not even that. I'm, I'm not even that. You guys, these guys will chew them up. In which case, then. March on, I suppose. Leave them behind. This should be okay. Sure, they'll put some breaches in, but I've got some decent infantry. Got mortars ready to rock and roll. No problems. Okay, let's get some investing on the go. Need to get this textile industry on the go. Do that, do that. Good. And this army is in place. Next turn will be the turn it happens. So instead, let's take my Russian agent and put him mm, try to take out this rake, this uh, agent, this uh, missionary. Let's send this guy on a long walk. It will take him many, many turns to get there. Okay, let's have a actually little peek at the Americas. What's going on? So the Brits have taken uh, Cherokee Nations. They have yet to expand. The United States hasn't formed and nothing's really happened. The pirates still exist. France has taken this easy territory. Hmm, it's a bit boring then. Nothing really has happened. I'll then spend whatever cash I have on. Reinforcing the next turn, I'll build walls around Cairo because apparently Britain has um, a habit of trying to navally invade Egypt to conquer Cairo. So I need to, if I'm going to get involved in a bit of defensive warfare, I need to build up my build up my walls, build up my walls, and um, make some changes to my army to make them more effective as siege troops. Probably some more elite line units in there. Maybe some grenadiers. Maybe some short range. I've not really recruited that many elite infantry units actually in this list, in this um, playthrough yet. But I think it's mainly because I've been spending so much money on my economy. So I've not really been able to spend as much money as I like on my economics. And is the Ottomans about to take Transylvania. At least in this campaign, I won't have the problem of the Ottomans turtling <laughs> and slowing the game down with all their stacks and stacks and stacks of troops. Although it's a bit juddery at the minute because I am rendering uh, rendering videos at the moment. Got to keep on rendering. Got to keep on churning. Because, like I said, I've, I've seen another video which may or may not have gone up by now because I am going to New Zealand. For three weeks, I'll be away from my computer, but I want to keep the the one video a day upload going. Um, so it does mean I need to record a lot in advance. Ooh, lovely! They're actually trying to attack me. Let's fight it. Infantry can cover huge area, but I will batter their troops back from the walls multiple times before they the mortars and I can just fire quick climb onto the breach. And I got fire by rank and so much other good stuff.
Okie dokie. <laughs> the enemy will try to smash their way in with siege equipment. Use your heaviest troops to defend any breach in the walls and be prepared to side So it's that side and that side. Directly to them. The enemy will try to wipe out all defenders, and if your men rout en masse from the settlement, the battle is over. So this is kind of the minimum. Then they're going to sit there doing nothing for now. My mortars are going to be here. Ah, oh, I don't have quick climb yet. Dang. There we go. So they're more over on the left, so... This unit, anyway. So I'm going to put my troops behind the walls so they don't get hit by artillery as the shots come flying in. So they're going to try breach here. Strong push on the right. Right, no one's going. They're definitely a strong push on the right. Even their cavalry is coming up. So we focus fire on a marine unit. Tactic, they're actually trying to. So let's have them. Oh, come on, get off the wall, get off that section of wall quickly. We're going to lose some because they're running back. Fire at will, fire at will, fire at will. Have them swarm the marines before they get that foothold on the wall. Bring these infantry down. I think this should take care of the cavalry. Do a wave a garrison line. I 
field artillery is wavering, that's okay. It's not crazy helpful if they're not actually if they're not actually firing quick line. Square again. Charging to combat. Turn off fire will actually, not it's not being much helpful. Good, got one general's bodyguard wavering. Hit those R's. The provincial cav is wavering, the marines are wavering. Fairly sure their own troops are shooting to the back of their own infantry up here. Regiment Jagoons is trying to climb the wall. Oh wow, it's proper two. Oh, who will win? Oh, he's had enough. Oh, yes. Let's turn fireball off. So they don't shoot up onto the walls and massacre these guys. Over here, let's get these guys attack the dragoons. Let's get used to a small unit of line infantry into here. So they're just the right size to pop pitch up in that little defensive position. Is that my guy's garrison in the walls? I do counter battery fire at range, not just out. 
So let's have them fire explosive shells onto this small unit of West in Western European infantry. Get my citizenry out of here. Even though they're a bit rubbish, there's no sense losing them to having a building collapse on top of them. Ooh, devastating hit. Rouchious wines. Yeah, bugged out. Nicely bugged out, including this guy. He's inside. Speed up time a bit because not a lot's happening. Like this unit's wavering, but they're not going to rout ever. Much to their credit, but. Dragoons have come back. Alright, let's just speed up time. Just need to keep an eye on the fort dispositions. These guys are doing a really bad job at shooting at this infantry. Should be massacring them. Realistically. Finally, holy moly. Okay, why don't you fall back, see if you can provoke them to actually moving up. Good. Now take up your positions. Should be a lot more effective then. Only one, two, four kills, five kills. Maybe not quite so effective. these troops so damn resilient to uh, to just being constantly shot at where is these guys Four. 
form a new battle line in advance on the guns, I suppose. If they're just going to sit there and shoot at me, then I'd rather advance up. Maybe not actually, they seem to be shooting me to bits. No, bad idea. A very stupid idea by me. So I want to hope that if these guys were out, then... Is this unit actually going to run out of ammunition? Screw it. Have them. Come down those steps and charge them. Holy moly. I'm not going to waste my time anymore. Good. Jesus. Get back up there. Is that it? Well, what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to cut the recording here because we're quite far into the park. Because I've got a feeling the AI is not going to attack. I'm just not going to force you guys to watch this. So, um, see you back in a minute, guys. Hey, guys. And I'm back. And yep, the Swedes just sat there not doing anything. So it's the end of the battle. I could have run out and got some have one up because the chance of this army is probably going to have to be bolstered to uh, chase down the raiding Swedish forces. More than likely. Because they're not going to go away now. They're just going to hang around. Could send this garrison out to chop them up. Oh good. The Mughals are getting rid of their other fleet. <clears throat> and with their other invasion force. So hopefully not, no, they're not coming around to uh, attack me but it would be bad for them because I could rapidly mobilize much faster than they ever can ever could there is a port in this region that has Good. not yet been developed select the type of port Odessa my fisheries isn't it and you see, lots of these regions are very poor, but mainly because there's only so much I can actually do to upgrade these regions apart from building things in them. So this region is very poor. Lots of my towns are very poor. High yield farms, wealthy ironworks. Let's have a look at what's been built. Yeah, Weaver's Cottage. Trade port. That's not actually trading anything, that's surprising. Uh, so let's go to Let's go up to here, let's go up to Finland. Wait a minute. I didn't even know I could do that. Well, hell, that's a bad idea. In this particular case, because now I've just lost a load of troops. <laughs> but I'm still curious. Didn't know I could do that. <laughs> so 
So I'm gonna use them to chop up that raiding force because I'm just gonna quick auto resolve it. Good. Then this army is ready to drive around the mainland again for about the seventh time in this series. Cool. Let's do a bit more economic investing. Cairo needs roads. There you go. Right, so next turn will be the turn. Well, actually, let's see what the impacts will be now. Persia, open. Cancel Alliance. Diplomacy. So everyone's going to slightly hate me a bit more because I'm disrespecting treaties, I think. Declare war with my allies versus your allies. So Britons refuse to join my side, but they are still my allies. So I am at war with the Mughal Empire. This army storm, storm straight to Persia. Radio. So we'll fight this battle, but looking at the timer, I think it's the end of this part. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.